Let's see. Am I okay? I'm on. How's everybody doing today? Everybody good? Yeah. Awesome. My um, my name is R.J. Hoggard, and um, I'll I'll um, tell you all a little bit about me and um, my uh, my business partner slash lovely bride who um, puts up with me on a on a daily basis. Yeah. <laughs> no, not single. Um, but one of the things I would love to hear from you all before we dive in this, uh, this afternoon is tell me a little bit about what you all have heard about the real estate market. Oh, there's the face right there. That's it. <laughs> yeah, Gary. We've, we've got a, a, a become acquainted with a, a realtor that goes to our church, First Methodist, up the street. Mm-hmm. And uh, they, uh, she, their house w- went on the market last week, mm-hmm. and and um, we're we're thinking it's still a little early because mm-hmm. uh, we're, we're we're afraid it's it, it's a little early. We, yeah. we, we, we don't want to have to move twice. Yeah, and 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 so uh, I'm trying not to even look at it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's going to mm-hmm. be what it's going to be. Yeah, right. And, right and and uh, so um, uh, we're starting to pack, uh, and uh, uh, so that we'll be ready. Yeah. But I don't think we're going to get a call and say two weeks. You know, we're ready for you. Yeah. So uh, you don't think that's going to happen here? Glenn? No, I, I'm thinking. Yeah. I'm okay. thinking. I, I'm thinking we'll be doing good if 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 we're here by Thanksgiving. Right. And 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 uh, but uh, it's uh, that's where we're at. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Anybody else have any thoughts, sir? Oh, here we go. Sally's got some thoughts, too, up here. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just amazed because I, I walk a lot mm-hmm. around, and i have um, walking around the neighborhoods here and across Kildare Farm Road and, and back behind, you know, um, and they're just very pleasant, modest, old neighborhoods, no fancy houses, just regular folks. Mm -hmm. And then you go around, I mean, there was a new house built on Griffith Street Mm -hmm. and and another one going in and they're, oh my God, you know, they're they're way bigger and more expensive than the the other houses nearby. And then you go over to McGregor Downs Mm -hmm. and drive around those neighborhoods and these things, well, I guess they're not mansions, but they're pretty darn impressive, big, fancy houses. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, oh, my God. And when you said somebody put his house on the market, and I said, yeah, and did it sell in a matter of days? Because the housing market has been pretty hot in in some parts of the country. Yeah, yeah. No, that's good. Good insight. I got you. Here we go. All right. Uh, I've, I've been looking at stuff for the past several months, okay? And sometimes in the major media, they come, with, come through with these scare stories about the housing market is crashing, mm-hmm. all right? And for those of us that will have to sell our house to help come in here, that's kind of disconcerting, mm-hmm. okay? Yeah. Uh, but then, you know, you keep reading, you keep reading. And uh, one article said that people are, are moving to places that have a lower cost of living, uh, has a better climate, and has jobs. Okay. That's and, Raleigh. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. and uh, so they're, they're basically saying, okay, well, that sort of describes the southeast, mm-hmm. okay, because people are moving from farther up north, they're tired of the snow. A lot of people might be retired, or where they, where they might have jobs where they work from home anyway. Mm-hmm. So they're trying they're trying to relocate. So um, I read something a couple of days ago. Okay, the Carolinas might not suffer so bad as let's say California mm-hmm. or New York State or New Jersey, mm-hmm. places like that. And so I'm kind of optimistic. I I, I know. I know houses aren't flipping in one day like they did a year ago. Mm-hmm. Okay, I know that that day's gone, 
but we didn't expect it to last that long, <laughs> okay? Mm -hmm. So we're just hoping that, that uh, the real estate market is at least reasonable mm -hmm. in yeah. North Carolina and in, in the places that have the jobs like the Charlotte, uh, the Raleigh mm -hmm. area, mm -hmm. and so forth. So we're just trying to stay optimistic about that. Yeah, that's great. There you go. Any other thoughts? Oh, got one over here. Is there any impact being carry from the corporate purchase of houses, 40-some thousand in North Carolina in the last mm -hmm. year, mm -hmm. and what's happening in Cary as a result of that? Yeah, great question. We'll get to that. Don't let me forget. We'll put a pin in that. Yeah. Any other thoughts? Okay. Well, let's dive in. Thank you for sharing. That uh, makes... Uh, helps me get an idea of where you all are coming from, what you're thinking, what you're seeing, and so forth. You know, one of the, um, this is a little bit about us combined, um, and that's my, um, my lovely bride there in the corner, Tracy. Uh, we've been doing this 16 years uh, combined, nearly 400 houses sold, experienced in various areas of real estate. We flipped houses before, um, in addition to helping people buy, sell, and build houses, and serving as an agent, we've um, flipped uh, 25 houses, roughly, we've got a portfolio of rental properties, and so we're all in on real estate, and um, we love real estate. We think it's an incredible uh, and wonderful way um, for individuals to build wealth over the long term, and so if you have uh, grandkids and kids that are thinking about buying a house or what have you, real estate has been shown, and I'll show you a chart here in just a little bit, to grow over time even though just like the stock market, it goes up and down, up and down in terms of values, over time it continues to grow. And uh, if you look at some of the wealthiest people out there, um, Warren Buffett and others, they also have real estate holdings in one way, shape, or form. And I'm even preaching this to my 23-year-old who keeps buying cars, and I keep telling him, you need to save some money and invest in real estate because that's an asset that's going to continue to grow over time. Um, I, this little bit of what we're going to talk about today, the wild ride from 2020 to 2022, we're going to look at uh, historical perspective, some of the uh, pricing pr predictions, and uh, look at interest rates and what's going on there, current activity. Um, the 2022 market, I don't know if you can see this here, 30-year mortgages had an average of 3.79%, okay? So we look at where interest rates are today, which are bumping up over 7%, and uh, in quarter one they were of 2022, they were at 379 Home supply decreased by 66% between January 2020 and 2022. And so we have a really... Um, really big need of, uh, of inventory of houses here in our nation. 2020, 29 states were estimated to have a having, uh, housing shortage, and then the average price of a primary home increased by 134% between 2020 and 2022. So well, I'm going to put this, though. I, this number seems really big, that 134%, but I'm going to put that in perspective here. So this is, uh, it's really interesting. So What's happening in 2023? So we've got Chairman Powell up in the right-hand corner who's trying to figure out what button to push in terms of the number of basis points that he wants to increase the prime rate. But these are some of the headlines that we're seeing, right? So when we look at that, it looks like the sky is falling, that everything is coming crashing down, and then we have Chicken Little who is screaming, the sky is falling, and the sky is falling. Now, I'm going to go down a little path here because, you know, chickens are really popular, especially with the price of eggs lately, right? So if you're a chicken farmer, you're really popular with the ladies these days. And um, in addition to that, it's taken proposals to a whole other level. Instead of using a diamond ring, 12 dozen eggs are much more valuable. But we're going to talk about real estate and going back to what uh, Chairman Powell has been dealing with and trying to control inflation. So he's continuing to increase interest rate rates in order to slow down growth, in order to um, control inflation. But here's something that I want to show you that's really interesting from a historical perspective. 
as you all can see from looking at, so these are the years 72 to 2022, and if we look here in the late 70s and early 80s where interest rates, you all remember those interest rates and where they were. Some of you may have bought, purchased your second home or third home during that time when interest rates were 16%. And if we look at the average from 72 to 2022, the average is 7.81%. Now, when we look at that with this perspective, interest rates don't look too bad based on what the historical average has been. But what happens is a lot of times, and I fall into this trap too, we look at it within the last couple of years where, I mean, I had a client who got, had an interest rate of 2.85%. I nearly fell out of my chair at the closing when I heard the interest rate, okay? But if we look at historically what the averages have been over time, we can see, oh, okay, 72 to 2022, 7.81%. From 1990 to 2022, 5.97%. And then uh, in 2022, started out at 3.80, jumped up to 5.34, and now it's closer to uh, bumping up over 7. Any questions about this at all? All right. Home prices. This is a chart that I love to show people. One of the things that's really interesting about this chart is in um, this line, the green line here, going all the way up, is showing a long-term trend of a 4% increase year over year in housing prices. What do you all notice here in 09, 10, 11, 12? What happened? The Great Recession, right? Yep. And housing prices dropped. Well, during the Great Recession, we talked about this last time uh, at the last presentation, the builders... Many of them went out of business, and they never caught up with demand. And then when they stopped building, when they went and completely out of business, the builders that were still there were not building enough houses. And then in addition to that, we had generations, new generations coming into the housing market, causing our inventory to continue to go down while the need continued to increase. And that's the reason why we have an inventory problem today. But if you look, we eventually here in, what is it, 2020 and 2021, we eventually catch back up to that line of that 4% return that we see from 1990 to 2023. And then we see it's probably going to drop down a little bit. That's what that green number is up at the 357. That's probably going to drop down a little bit. But that's what we're seeing in terms of a long-term trend and the annual median home prices across the United States. We were just simply catching up to that 4% return back in uh, 2020 and 2021 when we surpassed it. These are home sales. These have been adjusted seasonally, so you can see home sales going up and down. These are in millions. Uh, at the end of 2022, we were um, there at the, the last part, $4 million. And these are home prices. So if you look at this uh, key down here, the purple uh, bar is 2020, the green one is 2021, and the pink one is 2022. And so if we look at those, we still see what? We still see higher prices, a higher median price in 2022 as compared to 2021 and 2020. Okay, so let's take a look at inventory. As you can see, this starts in 2001 on the left-hand side, and we go to 2022. How inventory increased right during the Great Recession again because we had so many houses sitting, so it was a buyer's market as opposed to a seller's market. But then as time went on and we never caught up with the demand, eventually when these other generations started entering the market in 17, 18, 19, that's when our inventory plummeted. And um, that's why I believe as we look through this, we still will have a healthy market from a seller's perspective. 
Okay, so let me go back. Any questions about from those national numbers at all? Okay, let's take a look at locally. So this was an article that came out, uh, the 10 U.S. Uh, cities with the biggest increases in home sales. Raleigh was right there, year-over-year -year listings. Uh, medium home price of 441000 The um, This is Wake County. So this, I apologize. I wish I had February's numbers. I don't. Uh, they had not uh, printed them yet. But you can see in January a couple of interesting numbers here. So if you look at new listings from 2022 in January to uh, 2023, we're down 1.6%. If you look at closed sales, we're down 30%, so not as many people closing on houses, buying houses. If you, uh, and that's because, driven a lot by inventory. The median sales price, though, went up 6.2%, and the average sales price went up 10%. So... And if you, this is the other one I want to, uh, and I wish this, does the pointer work, Dave, over here? No, 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 okay, I thought that was correct. Okay, so this is the other thing I want to show you. In 2022, do you see the percent of original list price received? 103.4%. That means 3.4% over the original list price. We're down, okay, uh, to 94.3% uh, and then 97.7%. The other marker I want to show you is days on market until sale. In 2022, it was 13. In 2023, it was 46. So that gives you an idea of um, what's going on. We've increased our inventory a little bit, month of supply, but we only have 1.4 months of supply, which means that it would take, if we took all the houses that are currently listed, it would take 1.4 months to sell all of those houses. That is not a very long time, okay? Even with, you know, again, look at what we're comparing it to, 0.4 months as opposed to 1.4. It's still not a long time. When it takes six months to sell all the houses in inventory, as soon as we go over that six-month period, that's when it's a buyer's market as opposed to a seller's market, okay? All right. Historical days on market, this is really fascinating. I actually was able to run this real time. So if we look at October 2013 here, the entire MLS, all the houses in there, it was uh, 66 days on the market. That was 2013. And then on, in February, it was 44 days. So now compared to where we were in, at the end of 2021 and the first part of 2022, yes, we've increased the days on market, but good grief, things were selling in like an hour. So... Um, low supply. So if we look at 2013, you can see the number of houses. So, it, and the other thing I want to think about is think about how many houses have been built since 2013 in this area. And yet we still have a low supply, which is good if you're trying to sell your house. Okay. Historical median sales price. So if you look at 2013, it's down in the 200s all the way up to 2023. If you're thinking about selling your house, you're headed in the right direction. We're still in demand here. So this was something that we pulled off, the best places to live. Uh, this was actually put, pulled off the uh, National Association of Realtors. Raleigh was ranked uh, right up there at number two. Um, and one of the reasons why, and I'm going to show you some other companies as well, these are all the new companies that are expanding and moving into the Triangle area. Let's see if I have any more. These are some other ones. Apple, Google, Microsoft, Meta, which is Facebook, Wolf Speed, which is a uh, semiconductor, VinFast, which is an um, electric vehicle company, and then Nike is even looking at opening up shop here. So we have a lot of big companies, major companies, who are seeking to move into this area, bringing jobs and bringing people. I remember my wife and I, when we were sitting and we received the news about Apple moving into the area, she said, I hope they bring a house with them because I don't know where we're going to put them. <laughs> so again, if you're selling your house, it's a good place to be. 
All right, these are some of the uh, pricing predi uh, predictions. Again, the National Associati Association of Realtors expects Raleigh to continue to outperform the nation. Um, they, uh, it, so much so that it ranks Raleigh second and most likely to outperform metro areas. Um, and you can just see the articles, demand for housing continues to outpace supply. And Raleigh is right in there with the demand for houses. So one of the things they always like to talk about in real estate is location, location, location. But I love this picture because I thought that was uh, talking about uh, the importance of location. But one of the things that we're seeing in current activity and as you can see, this was taken in the first part of February. We're seeing 10 offers on a Fuquay home a couple of weeks ago, MAC, uh, multiple offers, Durham, RTP, area, Moorheads, uh, a week ago, and I know Briar Creek's a little bit different, but it's close enough. Uh, a week ago, Apex listed for 609 offers, first weekend, almost 10%, got us on top three offers, but didn't help the winning bid, showed a few homes, multiple offers, deadlines, Submitted an offer Raleigh, 400 price point. 2021 market has popped up for an encore. This is a listing that we just recently listed in Cary. It went active on Monday. On, and we have a new showing process that we use where we are at every showing to uh, meet the buyer's agent, to meet the buyers. It's a new process that we're incorporating. Uh, so this went active on Monday. We had 16 showings from 1 to 4, 4 p.m. on Tuesday, eight showings from 9 to 12 on Wednesday, multiple offers over asking and under contract on Thursday. And this is, uh, I, I'll talk a little bit about this later. If you want to, this is just a strategy that we, um, that we use. We go through there. So in terms of your question about carry, I would say absolutely it is impacting inventory in the Cary area and causing a lot of buyers to not, um, to have a very difficult time to find housing, especially first time home buyers, to find housing in this area. Um, there are companies out there before 2023 and interest rates starting going up that were buying entire neighborhoods to rent. So just think new houses, an entire neighborhood of new builds to rent out. So yes, these individuals coming in, buying houses in the Sun Belt in places like North Carolina and down in Georgia and in Florida, it is impacting the inventory and continuing to cause prices to increase. Um, I will say, though, that a lot of those companies are, no, are halting or um, they're uh, just putting the brakes on buying those houses right now like they were previously because of interest rates and where they are and the cost of borrowing money. So they just couldn't justify the investment. Does that help? Okay. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. They got frustrated and stopped looking for a house when things were so hot. So you now that things have calmed down a bit, mm -hmm. they're thinking of jumping back in and looking for a house. Okay. I mean, is, do you see that happening? Yes, yeah, so um, I do. Uh, and the reason why is because a lot of buyers are seeing the fact that if they don't jump in and buy now, they will continue to chase prices. And so that is the biggest challenge that um, they saw in the past. So we have a, I have a buyer now that I'm working with, and they're facing the same issue, the same problem, because they waited. Now the house, not only are they paying more for it, but now they've got to pay a higher interest rate, right? So they've got that going. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so that's why a lot of buyers are, are jumping in. The other thing that, um, you know, we saw the, the competition for pricing and, and um, so forth and some of the chatter out there that's going on in the market is that, um, that we, 
we're seeing that in specific locations. It's not happening um, across the triangle, but in specific locations where people want to be. People like in Fuquay, in Cary, in uh, Raleigh, uh, in those areas. There are some places where that's not happening. There's a, uh, a neighborhood in um, Holly Springs next to Sharon Harris. It's a newly built neighborhood, beautiful houses, but they're just not selling as fast. There's a house out there. I think it's been sitting now for 38 days. It is not near the dump. Yeah, not near the dump. Yeah, but it's interesting. You know, people are perplexed by it. Why is it not selling based on, you know, what's going on there? Now, I think some people, if, especially if they're moving in from a different area, have a hard time with Sharon Harris uh, and getting their mind wrapped around that I'm living next to a nuclear plant. So that's, uh, yeah, yeah. So good question. Yes. You're all in the same boat. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you're still going to hear that test horn every single time they test it on Tuesday afternoons or whenever it is. So, yeah. Yeah. Other question? Better, better than being downwind from a coal plant, though. Yes, that's very true. <laughs> or a dump. Yeah. <laughs> I keep hearing that uh, spring is the best time to sell. Yes, ma'am. And, uh, but for those of us going to the 6,000... You know, we can't move in until probably November, December. Yes, ma'am. So what's better, to put it on the market but say you can't move in until, uh, I'm not moving out till the fall or wait till s to sell in the fall. One of your charts there showed that the fall can be a good time to sell. Yes, ma'am. You just don't want to, so let's talk a little bit about that. Um, spring in this area is absolutely the best time to sell. So I'm just going to put that out there, no matter if you're trying to move or not. I mean, it, spring is the ultimate best time. Um, summer, early summer, is the second best until July 4th when all of Wake County either goes to the mountains or to the beach. So what's that? That's right, exactly. Uh, and that slow time runs, um, and it, it will increase a little bit when everyone returns and then as soon as school starts even though we're year-round school when school starts in the fall people are just distracted and then they will that um that will be a slow time and then there are a couple of more weeks uh after school starts in august and then you'll see it um increase again until thanksgiving yep. are you seeing many are you seeing many sales and then leasebacks yes so uh, we actually have a, um, well, that's what's happening with this particular client here. They're leasing back for 14 days. So you can lease back until um, day 59. At day 59, it becomes an investment property according to the mortgage company that the buyer is using. Now, if they're paying cash, it doesn't matter, okay? But if they are financing the house then that property that that buyer is buying becomes an investment property after day 59. Hmm. Great question. So what do we do? So what do we do? <laughs> <laughs> well, what would you like to do? <laughs> I want to be able to sell my house before we be able to sell. Yeah. I mean, you know, at, a, at the optimum price. Yeah. That's what we want, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So um, you... You, did you have a thought, Kim? If you had a sale, if you had a sale and lease back, yes, um, and it, the the lease back exceeded sixty days, yes. Now you said it becomes a um, an investment property in the mortgage company's mind. And what happens? Yeah, so then you commit mortgage fraud, oh. and so they can come in and take you to court and so on and so forth. The renter, so. the lease backer, or the uh, oh, the the end, well, it would really be the individual who's purchasing the house. So, yeah. So if you can find somebody that wants to go to jail, then, you know, that, you know, no, I'm just teasing. I'm teasing. So let me, let me come back to uh, Susan's question real quick, because that's a great question, right? Um, it, it's an interesting one because the, um, you know, if you're trying to sell your house and it all comes down to timing, it becomes a challenge. Right. I mean, there's no two ways about it. 
So one of the things that I always like to tell people is that people are still buying houses in this area, even in the fourth quarter of the year, in the last part of the year, okay? So it may take a little longer to sell, but you will still have people who are going to, to purchase it. And I can tell you, just from... Um, and to put a plug in, I mean, the, the new program that we are using to sell houses, we're showing that we can sell houses in eight days, so, which has really been a blessing for a lot of, a lot of sellers. So, yeah. A number of people here ran into that problem in our past as well. Mm. Some moved in with their children. Some went on three-month cruises, you mm -hmm. know, kind of, uh, because their house sold, and they put all of their things in storage. Yeah. So it can be done if you're creative about it. Yes, that's a great point. Thank you. And there are some um, more longer-term stays um, places that, um, that you can look at as well. Um, I've, there's a client here. She's actually moving into Glen Eyre, and she's moving into um, Autobahn Park, um, which is over off Kildare. And I am uh, I actually called the leasing agent over there because I'm getting so many questions about it and said, hey, we need to have a conversation because I know a lot of people are, you know, going through the same things and asking the same questions that you are, Susan. So, yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Got to get the discipline down. Okay, because uh, it's pretty evident that some places in the country are cold for the housing, some places are hotter for yes. housing, and I think we're fairly fortunate in that we're one of the better markets. Yes. Uh, does that translate into you seeing the marketplace as far as the number of inquiries being more widespread to people from all over the country? make contacts to try to move to this area? Yes. Yeah, okay. we're seeing people move in. Uh, of course, the main areas have been the Northeast and California. Yeah. Um, but one of the reasons why it, that we're seeing that is because there are so many jobs here. And in addition to that, people now and some companies can work wherever they want to work. They don't have to work in the same location as the company. And so that's been really helpful to boost this particular area. I mean, you know, it's kind of interesting. I thought years ago, man, North Carolina has this beautiful little secret that no one knows about. And then, you know, it's just one of those things that word has spread because of the beautiful weather, the great place to live. We're still an affordable housing area compared to a lot of the places in the country. And so um, people move here for the climate and for the jobs and uh, for the environment. Less property taxes. Let's hope so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are moving in for less property taxes? Yes, yes. Oh, yeah, it's crazy. It's, an it's, it's another mortgage payment. Yeah. Yes, yeah, you're right. Uh, my, my comment was let's keep property taxes low. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Great, great comment. Any other questions? Okay, so let me ask this because you guys did such a great job at communicating with me before we looked at some of the numbers. How are you feeling? Or what are your thoughts after you've seen the information that I shared with you today? Any better? Optimistic. Optimistic. Okay. Thank you. Still not sure of the best time to sell, particularly with, um, you know, because that 59 days. Yes. Yeah. And there are some ways that you can get creative as well where you are saying, okay, uh, I'm willing to, to sell my house, but I need to push closing out for 60 days. And then I need to have 59 more days in order to, you know, um, to rent back. So there are some, some creative ways that we're seeing with, with the sellers that we're working with. Take it off the market for the summer. 
Uh, you could take it off for 30 days. So what I would say, you have to be careful there, right? So if, um, if you are selling your house in summer, you know, yeah, I don't think you're going to have any problems selling the house, first of all, in the summer. But if, let's say, for example, things happen with Glen Air and they have to push things out or what have you, you want to at least take it off for 30 days so that the system resets. Uh, because otherwise, your cumulative days on market begins to show up. So you may only, <clears throat> you may only have, be on the market for, let's say, 20 days, but your cumulative may be 40 days. And then people begin to ask what's wrong with this house? And so that's something to be aware of. You're welcome. Any other questions? I have heard that, th that there are a lot of investors who are buying properties and then putting, then renting them mm -hmm. as investment properties. And that's yes. why the housing market it is tough to find houses to buy. Yes. And that's what we were talking about earlier. E even these huge companies coming in, buying these houses, uh, America Home Rents was one of those um, companies that was, they came in to this area and within one fell swoop bought 68,000 homes in this area uh, over the course of 10 years, and that pulled, obviously, a significant amount of inventory off the market. And then that's when people start to say, hey, wait a minute, what do we, do we need to put some, you know, some parameters around this? So, but we're not seeing that currently because interest rates and where they are. But there, is it true that there's, there's no such thing as a starter home anymore? Well, it depends on what your price point is for a starter home. So, if <laughs> so, when you look at a when you look at a starter home, young yes, young couple, um, I, I would always ask. So, yes, there are in this area. So, typically, what you're seeing are starter homes in places like Nightdale and Windell. Um, and you're seeing um, in south of Fuquay, uh, the Harnett County portion of Fuquay. Um, and, and also you're seeing them more in uh, Pittsburgh and down that area, although Pittsburgh is taking off as well. Um, but one of the things that um, if you begin, you'll, and you'll see this, um, companies and builders are moving further and further out. And so there are huge swaths of Johnston County that are being purchased by builders right now in the Smithfield, Kinley, Selma area where they are building massive neighborhoods to try and meet this need of providing a house that's anywhere from high twos, low threes for a starter family. What, what's a starter home in Cary these days? A starter home in Cary, wow. That is a great question. So a starter home in Cary is, and it's depending on where it is and what kind of condition it is, it's probably going, it will be a um, house that's been rehabbed, okay, like a smaller house, 1,100, 1,200 square feet, um, because some of the houses, we, I was just helping a buyer uh, the other day, we were um, looking at a house behind the, um, the elementary school over here. And, you know, it was 600,000 plus. Um, and, you know, it, 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 it's just pushing a lot of the, the younger families out yep. because they just, you know, they can't afford it. So, yeah, great question. The market for senior houses in terms of the 55 plus communities and those types of things, it is growing leaps and bounds um, because we, uh, we, have a, 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 we have a population that is continuing to grow in that senior population. And so that's why you're seeing a lot of these neighborhoods specifically targeting 55 plus, uh, that 55 plus buyer. And uh, they see it continuing to grow over time. Oh, yeah, yeah, so, 
Yeah, there, there aren't enough. I, you know, we have clients who, you know, are sometimes saying, hey, I want to move into a 55 plus community and sometimes finding a house can be difficult. In Apex, yeah, yeah. It's a great place to be, yeah. They're still expanding out at Briar Creek. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, some of the land that Briar Creek wanted to buy 10 years ago, uh, but they thought it was too expensive. Brothers. Toll Brothers, yeah. Yeah, they're cutting trees down on that land now. Yeah. Uh, and Toll Brothers didn't get the land. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. So somebody else to get the bull. Yeah. And, uh, there's, a, there's a big development going in just north of uh, uh, where we live on, on uh, Page Road. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's growing and expanding in this area. And the reason why is because, number one, you have a lot of. Um, grandparents moving down from other areas who want to be near grandkids, yeah. right? Okay. And then the other thing is um, you have a lot of people who have been here whose kids have moved out and they want a smaller footprint of a house to take care of. They don't want to have to take care of a big house and a big yard and those types of things. So that's why you're seeing those communities really take off. And um, I think you're going to continue to see those take off as time goes on. Yes. Even Fuquay has, I think, two uh, 55 plus communities. It took them a long time to get yeah. them there, but yeah. they're there now. Yeah. 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 So, absolutely. I mean, if Fuquay's got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, well, and the other thing, too, so from a builder's perspective, this is really interesting because I know a lot of people. Um, sort of get concerned about affordable housing and those types of things. The challenge that we have is land is expensive. And then add to that the development of the land of just simply putting in pipes for sewer and um, pipes for plumbing and paving the road and putting the curbs and so forth, uh, running the electrical. It, it's very, very expensive. And so from a builder's perspective, they have to determine, okay, what kind of return can I get on my investment if I'm going to build here and recover my costs and make a profit. And so th that's why now you're seeing um, a lot of, if you, um, you live in Apex, so old US one and Apex barbecue, all of that development, it's a combination. So it's not just home, single family homes, but you have townhomes. You're gonna, you'll see more and more of that as time goes on where more townhomes will be built because that return on investment is much higher for that builder uh, because they can put more people in there and it's just overall um, more profitable. And that's why you're seeing a lot of single family homes being built in Johnston County because the land's cheaper. So, yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, but my guess is that the, the, the jobs are not particularly located in Johnston County. Uh, and as I was driving down to Fuquay, fortunately, the other morning, going uh, in the way the traffic wasn't. The opposite yeah. way on 55. And so if you yeah. just look at, at, the, at the feeder flows coming into the greater triangle region yes. from all these outlying communities, yes. it, I wouldn't do it. But So is there then a move? towards people to move to higher density housing closer to a, an urban center like downtown Cary, although it's very expensive downtown. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great question. So a couple of things that you're seeing, especially with some of the younger families who are moving out to Johnson County, is that they don't have to travel to work every day. So they can work from home, which is really helpful so that they can stay there. Um, for the ones who are traveling in, and I kind of chuckle, uh, because they've been doing all that work on I-40 East, and I'm going, guys, we're, we're going to need more lanes by the time you get finished, you know, uh, because of all the people coming in, driving in. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it is a challenge, but you have these young families who want a house, who want a yard, who want to be able to live in an area where their kids play Little League Baseball and so forth. And so they're willing to make the sacrifice 
until it's time to move up to that next house. And so they're thinking, oh, okay, so I buy this house and then and it, I'm going to build up that equity. And then maybe we move a little closer. Could be, or they stay and they move into the next house that is built there in that particular area. So they're, they're getting creative on how they um, are working it, trying to work it out. I know they were talking about for years, light rail. And I always said, if you know, you had, if you had an area where you could run light rail from like Rocky Mount, for example, and Oxford and some of these smaller little towns, it would be a, a boom for them because they would be able to create some of these centers of these, some of these beautiful towns. I mean, Rocky Mount, I don't know if you all have been down there lately. It's beautiful, but you know, they just don't have the hat, the downtown area. They just don't have the commerce or anything else. So you know, it's, um, it's one of those things that I think is a challenge for North Carolina and will continue to be, especially as our population continues to grow. Um, but I believe that we're, we're going to have to get creative as we move forward. So, yeah. What other, man, you all are wonderful with these questions. I love it. What other questions can I answer? Was this helpful for you all? Okay, great. Well, I'm going to be um, down front. If you have any questions or, you know, would like to um, ask questions about your own house and, and some of the things that we do, would love to answer those. But thank you so much for coming today. I really do appreciate it and wish you all the best. And I hopefully see you in May, maybe. Okay, I got a thumbs up from Ben. So there we go. See you all in May. So thank you. Yes.